attention and the indication. Well, thank you, Professor Eckstein. Uh, uh, great as always. Uh, if you would like to stay with us, uh, please, Professor, uh, you have a, another talk uh, anyway. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, could I welcome the third speaker, Dr. David Shaw. Dr. Shaw is a consultant vascular radiologist at Leeds Teaching Hospitals uh, UK, and he is going to talk about stabilized techniques in type B aortic dissection. David. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, thanking Professor Sullivan and the Egyptian Vascular Club for this, uh, to, uh, to this meeting. I've really, really enjoyed it. And I've also enjoyed the very warm welcome that I've received. Luckily, most of what I'm just going to mention has already been talked about by Professor Eckstein, so we can rush through a number of these slides. But my uh, task today is to talk to you about a technique for type aortic dissection, which hopefully leads to total aortic remodeling. I have no conflicts. So just a little bit of background, which we've already really heard, but just on this slide, the, de the detail here is that even though it's not very common, it's dangerous, it kills, and optimum medical therapy is the one thing that significantly reduces mortality. T-bar has now become the standard therapy for type B dissection, but T-bar alone, uh, for, but for uncomplicated dissection, the debate continues, and we are looking for more features that might predict poor outcomes in the long term. Obviously, the role of T-bar is to cover the primary entry tear, increase the true lumen diameter, but what it has been found is that it also promotes false lumen thrombosis and aortic remodeling. And it's this aortic remodeling that can le lead to improved long-term survival. One of the problems of T-bar alone is that about 30 to 40% of people will have false lumen expansion in the long term over the next two to five years. People have tried other techniques to promote false lumen um, uh, thrombosis in the thoracic aorta, including the Knickerbocker technique and the candy plug technique. The candy plug, I believe, is not overly, is not e easily available, and Knickerbocker um, hasn't been used extensively. In 2006, Cook introduced this bare metal stent, which you could then place and extend into the visceral aorta, and that showed that it improved the support to the true lumen and treated dynamic malperfusion, but also it promoted better aortic remodeling. And a Japanese group recently have demonstrated that placing a petticoat, or using the petticoat technique, they get a 89% um, aortic, total aortic remodeling, but still, well, 100% thoracic aortic remodeling, 89% total aortic remodeling, but still 11% form a aortic aneurysm at two years. The stabilized technique is a technique that was induced in 2014, and the aim of this is to restore the whole aorta to a single tube. The technique um, requires you to place a full-length T-var from a safe proximal zone. We rarely have to cover the uh, left subclavian artery. Uh, we don't require a 20 millimeter zone. We uh, look at the site of the primary entry tear, and if we think we're going to get coverage without covering the left subclavian, we would do it regardless of the, of the length uh, between the left subclavian and the primary entry tear. The T-bar is then placed full length throughout the aorta to the celiac axis, and then the dissection stent is placed throughout the abdominal aorta to as close to the uh, aortic bifurcation as possible. Once that has been done, a uh, dilation balloon, the sort of aortic occlusion balloon type, uh, like a Reliant or a, a Gore uh, aortic dilation balloon, uh, is then placed and the stent is expanded. And now you start really below the level of the first T-var. You always have to use two two, two uh, stent grafts for the thoracic, 
and you need to start below the level of the uh, first T-VAR because if you don't, there's a high, s high uh, risk of actually displacing the top end of the, uh, of the first T-VAR. The aim here is to expand the graft and the stent to the outer wall, so thus from the level of the lower thoracic aorta through the diaphragmatis and into the abdominal aorta, you are restoring the aorta to a single lumen. And by doing this, you're also excluding any retrograde perfusion to the false lumen of the thoracic aorta. The timing of intervention is important, and we tend to try and reserve any stabilized technique to greater than 14 days. And if we have to do something before 14 days, we will just do the T-VAR and petticoat, and then we will come back and complete the procedure in a second stage. So this is a case that I'd like to show you, which is a 54-year-old male who presented with a typical history, has typical um, uh, cardiovascular risk factors, and you can see he has this tight B dissection extending down the, uh, sorry, I just wanted to stop that, but never mind. Can we just uh, get that to run again? So tight B dissection extending through the thoracic aorta, through the abdominal aorta. You'll notice the left renal artery has a static involvement uh, and then it extends into the common iliac arteries. So this was initially treated as uncomplicated. He did have a small deterioration in renal function, but that improved without uh, any intervention and just with hydration. And he was transferred back to the normal ward after four days. But unfortunately, he, there was a failure to control his blood pressure on oral medication. And due to his refractory hypertension, he had to be transferred back to the HDU and required further IV therapy and monitoring. He also had, as you can see, some adverse morphological features with uh, a large uh, hot total size of aorta and a large false lumen. Uh, and therefore, he was reclassified as complicated rather than uncomplicated, and a decision in to intervene was taken. Uh, sorry, I'm going to overrun, so I'm going to need a little bit more time. Um, and this was done on day 16 the full the stents were placed and i'd just like to show you a video of what it looks like when you are rupturing the lamina um, because you have to realize that um, it's not without some sort of fear that sometimes you do this you'll notice that the balloon goes up and what you're looking for is this sudden give as the lamina ruptures. And we do that all the way down to the, all the way down from the lower thoracic aorta. Sorry, my, uh, I can't, uh, I just need that to run, please. Throughout the abdominal aorta to the level of the aortic bifurcation. So this particular patient, 48 hours per pro or post procedure, his blood pressure had normalized, it was uh, uh, stable on oral medications, EGFR had improved, he had no pain and there were no neurological symptoms. His pre-discharge CT demonstrates that his false lumen had thrombosed and the abdominal aorta in the treated segment had gone to a single lumen, but obviously just above the aortic bifurcation there remained a dissection. At two years, he came back for his uh, uh, follow up and you can see that the aorta is completely remodeled now. There is no false lumen. It's a single lumen all the way through. Uh, you'll notice that we did put a stent in the left renal artery and that remains patent, but he's got a single lumen all the way through.
to the untreated segment at the lower end of the, th of the abdominal aorta. He's also now got normal renal function. So this is a sort of accumulation of results from published series and from our own series, which is this publication at the bottom here. Uh, we had 11 patients, Hofbirth had 11 patients, and Melisano has 10 patients. And this shows that it's uh, the 100% technical success rate with 100% thoracic aortic uh, thrombosis and remodeling and a 91 to 100% abdominal aortic remodeling but even in those patients who have a persistent false lumen in the abdominal aorta, at 30 months so far, there's been no aneurysmal degeneration. So we think that will prevent uh, any need for a further intervention in the long term. So in conclusion, I'd like to say it seems logical that after uh, a, a dissection to try and restore the aorta to a single lumen, we think it'll improve uh, long-term survival we think the procedure is safe, and in the discussion I can discuss uh, why we had one uh, aortic rupture during this procedure. Uh, we think uh, the results so far in the short to mid term are excellent, but obviously it'll be time that tells whether this actually truly does uh, lead us to any reduction in mortality uh, and uh, secondary intervention. And then this is my great surprise, shukran. <laughs>